Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I would like to talk about another after installation task. In section 1, optimizations here. Yeah. Okay, the uh, first optimization that happens is before the even before the installation of any software is actually the server. And I just want to go over that. On the server we need to make sure that we are using a RAID array and it's still in Bosch we are using a RAID 6. Uh, RAID 6 allows us um, to have two disk failures and the machine will still continue. Um, the other optimization is making sure we have enough disk space uh, for the work we want to do. The other optimization is to standardize on an LTS version of Ubuntu for the software operating system. So there you go. Uh, at the moment we're using a Dell 730 or a 730 server uh, with these specifications. Uh, what's of interest is this 5 terabytes. We have 5 terabytes of this space and 125 gigabytes of RAM can be used. To see how much that cost us and how much they quoted, Dell quoted us, I've uploaded the invoices for your uh, reference. Okay, so that is the first uh, optimization is the server hardware. The second optimization is the Tomcat web app. Um, there are a lot of things that you can optimize but first of all make sure that it uses uh, ETF8 encoding for languages. Uh, I also suggest uh, modifying that file and having a look at the log settings uh, making sure uh, the logs are uh, settings are according to your needs. Uh, I removed the Tomcat logging here. It got very, very verbose, and the log files became very large. So in that file there, I uh, commented out the logging facility. Uh, commented out logging. Saved me a lot of this space. Then the next thing you want to enable Tomcat security. Uh, that's one of the optimizations, definitely. And then uh, if you're using Tomcat 8, you must add this to your Tomcat server config file. Um, then uh, if you're using Tomcat 7 and, and lower, or Tomcat 6, uh, try to enable the NIO connector by adding this protocol uh, setting uh, for example here in the uh, server, server config file in this file here in that file there uh, and adding that protocol in the correct section there it must be enabled for port 80 and port 443 the next thing is to disable the APR listener that's not required the other one is to uh, disable the use of the mod JK, uh, Apache mod gate JK, and use Authpipe. In fact, you don't even have to install the Jack Apache web server. Another interesting thing is if you're using the BIO connector, not the NIO connector, you will want to up, uh, set up a quite a few threads because each thread, uh, the server will create a thread per user. So if you're looking at a lot of concurrent users, have a look at uh, increasing the max thread. Another thing very important is to remove the enable lookups because um, that will waste Tomcat's time. A uh, very uh, handy thing to do. And then another thing I had to do was this headers thing but it seems to have sorted itself out. It was, it was a problem from the upgrade of DSpace 182 to 3.2. Alright, that handles the server configuration. Um, normally we do not change anything uh, that is packaged already uh, by Debian or Ubuntu packages but uh, in this instance we'll here have to make an exception and when the um, up software if Tomcat is upgraded uh, you must come and refer to this page here to make sure that you uh, have all the optimizations back again now we uh, have now we can set up the default context in the, in the, uh, 
for the DSpace application. This has nothing to do with the service, the context, the default context. This is the application specific. And these are the production settings for the default context. Uh, we don't want it reloadable because we're not doing uh, customizations and need the uh, applications to reload. Um, that's just wasting time on the production server. Caching we want on a production server uh, to optimize the, the, the response times. And allow linking we want false. Um, that is a security risk on a production server. But on the development server, yes, we want it reloadable, so we want to see how changes come up. Uh, we don't want caching because we want to see what happens in real time with our customized changes. And allow linking is true there on the development server. So you can see there's a, a big difference between the production and development settings for the DSpace application and its application context file. And where to modify that? You modify that in, the, in this file there, and uh, you copy and paste this in there, and that's, um, that should be enough. Okay, so that deals with Tomcat. Uh, there's quite a few things to do with Tomcat. Uh, let's go and see what other optimization. The next optimization we'll try is the PostgreSQL database. What I did with my system is I installed with the PG Tune, which is uh, part of the uh, it's part of uh, Ubuntu. So to install it, you just type this, copy and paste it into the terminal, and I'll install this. And then follow these instructions. Just remember uh, the version of PostgreSQL that you have installed uh, that might have to change. And then you um, type this command to do the tuning. And then you type this command to see the differences. Uh, and then you type this command to make the, uh, if you agree with the differences, to make the tuned version of the PostgreSQL conf active and then restart to PostgreSQL database. Uh, the other optimization of the database um, is the connections. Um, it happens quite often that the database runs out of connections. Um, so there's two steps to that. Um, First step is to tell DSpace to uh, use more database connections, and then step two is to enable more database connections to the database uh, by modifying the database itself. So there's the instructions there uh, to up the uh, connections. Another thing is to do some regular maintenance uh, and vacuum the database, uh, makes it more responsive, and. Um, Task is run as the root user here and uh, executed though as a Postgres um, as a Postgres user. Uh, so we have a small little Postgres uh, cron tab there. And uh, what it does at 20 past 4 every morning, it uh, vacuums the database and does an analysis to, um, to clean up all the, uh, what do they call in the database? I can't remember. To clean out all tables and things like that. Okay, so that's optimization of the database. Let's see what else there is. The Java Virtual Machine. Uh, just to give you an example of how much uh, memory the Java Virtual Machine uses. We have our machine lately installed with uh, up to 125 gigs of RAM. And you can see how the RAM usage creeps up. So what I've done now is I set up a task for the server to restart on Sundays at 11 o'clock in the evening, I think, um, so that I can recapture the, the RAM there. But this is a really good illustration to see that um, the Tomcat web app server is, um, or the DSpace application, I'm not sure which one, but one of them uses a lot of RAM. Okay, um, so it would be great if there was um, some Java experts to profile where the RAM is being used and to optimize the application. Do you have the tools and some uh, information to help you with optimizing it? 
but basically you want to set up the Java environment, so I'll go to those two steps with the Java environment to set up and check the parameters. The next optimization is uh, the log files. Um, it's a good, uh, good um, practice on a, on a uh, production server just to have the log files report errors. So you just change that info to error. Um, and then look, uh, this is in the build properties file, okay, that's where you modify this. And then in the log4j property files in the config folder, in the source config folder, um, there's also places there where you can change. Uh, have a look at all those files in there. Uh, also, um, have a look at this uh, for, for the solo log files. This might not be relevant anymore, but it's, uh, I've left that there for uh, information purposes. And then I've also just to make sure that uh, everybody can read and write the log files. I uh, at midnight I set up the permissions again for the log files. Right, so that's log files. Have a look at the log files. Just try and make sure the log files only report errors. On the development server, you want the log files to be either info or debug because you want as much information on the log file but on a, on a production server it's good enough to have one or preferably error error you just want to see errors okay what other major optimization the Ubuntu software um, I suggest to run through this procedure so that um, the server does unattended upgrades uh, for example, when you're away on the weekend and you can't get to the server and a critical security fix comes through, it's nice to know that the server upgrades itself with that security fix. It's a nice optimization. Um, you can also install the Monad service. Uh, basically what this does is it checks that services like SSH uh, are running and Tomcat are running. And if the service goes down for a particular time, say five minutes there, uh, it will restart the service and then alert these users. Um, and here is an example for the SSH. So to have uh, almost 100% uptimes, I suggest using this as well. I did enable it, but I've taken it out. Uh, the service seems to be fairly, uh, fairly stable now. Sorry, another one on this side here, the Bitstream Checker, I suggest uh, the database became extremely large with the Bitstream variables and I uh, suggest you change those and look at those settings to reduce the, the amount of Bitstream data in the database. Uh, and then lastly, uh, there's some troubleshooting um, help when doing optimization. And uh, I think we've, yeah, we've completed that. So that's uh, a basic introduction to optimizations. Thank you.